my god, do you feel that? Dun 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 Whoa! Yes! Finally! Oh my god! This is why I love video game music. I am so excited to return to the world of Final Fantasy VII when Rebirth drops. But while waiting for that, let's compare the official versions of the very iconic One-Winged Angel and once and for all decide which version is considered the best. Let's go. I'm String Player Gamer, and if you love video game music, hit that subscribe button because this is the place to be. This is the original Final Fantasy VII One-Winged Angel from the PlayStation 1 game. It was groundbreaking for me as someone who played the game during launch as it was my first time to ever hear an actual recorded choir in a video game soundtrack. Yes, I know there's earlier instances of it, but in my life, in my experience, that was the first time I heard of it. And so One-Winged Angel is always gonna be a special part of my own personal history as a gamer. Even with just MIDI instruments, Nobuo Oematsu has a distinct musical flavor that you know, oh my god, this is Nobuo Oematsu, the texturing of that MIDI harp, the texturing of the timpani and the horns, oh my god, yeah. There is something to the original version, the snappiness of the MIDI. There is a concept in MIDI arrangement called quantizing, in which if you're arranging through a MIDI DAW, like a Logic, for example, and you're inputting drum beat to tuck, to tuck, you can kind of drag your mouse to highlight the whole drum passage MIDI that you wrote, click a button, and it will quantize the entire passage. It means it will snap to the exact tempo grid. You are removing the human element of having a synchronized tempo. When a drummer plays live, he's playing as a human would play, and not every beat is like exactly robotically, mechanically in sync. But with MIDI technology, with quantizing, you snap every single note on the rhythmic grid if you want. So every tempo is exact as you want it. There's that certain charm with MIDI, especially in the NES era. Every music is most likely quantized because it sounds so robotic and not in a bad way. It's kind of its own charm. And I think PlayStation N64 is one of the last bastions of video game music still relying on MIDI technology. And later on with PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, with transition gradually to a more standardized sound recording. <laughs> Yeah, it's so exact, like a marching band.
Crisis Core, a prequel to the original Final Fantasy VII game. But how different will be the One-Winged Angel version here? Time to find out. Somehow this reminds me of Kafka's themes from Final Fantasy VI, kind of giving emphasis to the playfulness or the clown-like attitude, probably because this is a story about a younger Sephiroth before he discovered his dark past. <laughs> Yes, oh my god. First off, I like that it goes straight to the lyrical part. If you notice, especially with those bassoon lines, dun 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 dun, this is more like a polka, a dance polka instead of the usual militaristic march that the original One Wing Angel was in the Final Fantasy VII PlayStation, the Distant Worlds, and the Dissidia versions. <laughs> Okay, there is one encompassing theme that I'm getting from this interpretation. There is much instability. There is much moodiness represented by all those erratic arpeggiated lines, especially the flute and the treble lines. And all these modulations, these sudden key changes that's happening, especially in the Soros Imani's line. In the original version, most of the time, the entire piece stays in one key, has a very stable tempo with a rigid instrumentation, rigid militaristic feel. This is definitely related to the story elements where a younger, more overconfident Sephiroth as opposed to the more mature, strategic, tactical warlord Sephiroth of the original games. <laughs> You know, in those movies when they have a flashback to when the main character was still a kid or like a toddler and you would hear this innocent sounding harp music and then to top it off, they added those children's choirs with those angelic cherubim-like voices. Definitely a reflection of where the character of Sephiroth is, where his mind is, where his moods are, where his mindset is in this particular era of the game. <laughs> This might not be intentional, but this might just be my own biases as an arranger, as a composer. Listen to this, listen to this, huh? What is that percussion? A tambourine, which is from a mainstream non-musician's point of view, a tambourine is a child's instrument. The symbolism is going heavy here. They even use pizzicato strings, which for all intents and purposes denotes comedic characteristics. So, dun 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 dun, comedy Sephiroth. <laughs> There it is again, menacing adult Sephiroth slowly manifesting himself. Oh, 
Oh, right at the end of the piece, it gets into the standard intro of the original piece. Definitely a refreshing take from the very standard militaristic march of One Winged Angel that we all know. This next version is from Distant Worlds. So if you're not familiar, Distant Worlds is a series of orchestral concerts organized by Square Enix themselves. It's an official series of shows. It usually gets sold out, but they also have their own Distant Worlds arrangement of One Winged Angel. There you go. This version is almost like a one is to one transcription of the original console version with a little bit of modification in the intro. But the great advantage of live instruments is the nuanced changes of tempo and volume. For example, for this quieter part with the flute, it's so much fun to do that. Effortless even to do that as live musicians. Whereas if you have to program that on MIDI, there's so many extra steps to make MIDI sound human. There's even a process called humanization of MIDI where you kind of select a bunch of MIDI notes and in some programs you click the button called humanize. It will randomize the volume of each individual note emulating the performance of a human where not every note is the same tempo. That piano, oh my God, that caught me off guard. I don't remember that piano being there, but wow, that is a nice crispy texture to the rhythmic drum core like feel of the orchestral parts. That's actually a genius idea to have some textures done by the piano because the piano has this certain charm. There's this hybrid feeling of a piano. It can sound percussive, it can sound melodious, it can sound both. And if you're trying to emphasize something that is like rhythmic, visceral, a little bit of terror and fear, a piano is a perfect texturizer. Oh my God, uh, that timpani, dun dun, dun 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 dun, so iconic that part. Even the pronunciation of the words here, it's even more crisp, more clear, more determined. That beautiful, thick, thick harmony right there. Oh my God, did you hear that? That subtle softness and then build up. Oh. Yes, only a human performance can easily pull that off. Wow, now you can hear the cello and the bass melody clearer because the dun dun, the staccato strings intentionally soften to give way to the bass melodies. Brilliant.
Oh my god, the snare drum is such a character in this piece. Did you hear that? That clap! Or those rim shots of percussion. That is so crispy, so attention grabbing. It's like, hey, brilliant. Oh my god, the delivery of the lyrics is even more concise and clear in this one. Wow, I feel like that was one of the versions that captured perfectly a live version of the original composition without changing too much. It is a truly loyal transcription, almost one is to one, except with a kind of modified intro and a definite ending. But yes, I would say that is like probably one of the standard live versions. But of course, it's not the last version that we're going to listen to. Hold up. Hi, Editor SPG here. I would like to also mention that the Dissidia version and the Distant Worlds version are practically the same exact arrangement, although recorded very differently. The Dissidia version was of course recorded a bit more aggressively, very fitting for a fighting game. And the Distant Worlds version was recorded more like a live classical concert with more obvious contrasts between the softer and the louder sounds as one example. But yes, I'm bundling them together since they are practically the same exact exact arrangement. Let's continue with the video. And yes, of course, I know a lot of you are waiting for this. One Winged Angel, the Advent Children version. Aside from the additional harmonies with the horns, this intro section so far is pretty identical to the Distant Worlds version. And that is the moment when everything changes. It is now a symphonic metal piece. Ooh, the pulse of the kick drum and the pinch harmonics of the electric guitar, oh my God. It adds so much tension, so much energy. Going halftime tempo on this part is genius. It adds even more emotion and drama. Story-wise, this song is used in Advent Children, which is supposed to be a sequel to the original story. So I'm guessing that's the reason why they change up the lyrics. It kind of has a different energy when sung with these lyrics, but you know, the overall arrangement is still epic. And that halftime, such a powerful beat. Those pinch harmonics are just a standout. Oh my God, they add so much.
now it becomes a call and response between the orchestra and the band. Imagine it's like oh, classical meets metal and then they're having a conversation and they're being unified by this visceral choir. Here we go, this is the new section. That entire choral section with the rock section right there. If you remove the metal aspect, if you remove the metal accompaniment, that choral section, what they're singing, the style they're singing, these long notes, it's very much like a Baroque or Renaissance liturgical piece, like related to those Gregorian chants, where it's just like long notes extending the words. Cultures collide. <laughs> they had to return to the original version somehow. This is very purely orchestral this time. And we're back to the fusion. Yeah, Advent Children version. That is the right combination of epic cinematic orchestral arrangement with modern rock metal sensibilities. And it's just such a perfect balance of that. And my favorite version of this was when I saw Nobuo Oematsu himself, the composer of the Final Fantasy series, performing this live, the Advent Children version, live with his band, the Black Mages, with a full orchestra. And the way they entered the stage, it was just so dramatic. This is one of my favorite moments as a fan of video game music. There it is, the stage opening. Make way for the god of VGM. <laughs> 16 years later and I'm still getting goosebumps from this intro. I'm like a kid again. Well, I am still a kid. See? This moment, this exact moment, Nobuo Oematsu headbanging to his own composition is just so surreal, even seeing that on video. And this is like 16 years ago. This is like a 240p video. I don't know. I didn't care. It was just too much awesomeness. By the way, if you're enjoying my content and want to support the channel, consider joining my YouTube memberships or my Patreon. Let's continue. Kingdom Hearts version. Yeah. 
Oh, interesting. An abridged intro, which makes sense because this is like an arena fight. It's more direct to the point. Just fight immediately. No exposition, no story. Just fight Sephiroth. That's it. <laughs> interesting. It kind of has that Kingdom Hearts vibe. I think it's because of that flute passage that kind of gives it, I don't know, a Disney-esque character. Rhythm section and choir is still solid, to be honest. Okay, this section right here, it feels almost identical to the PS1 version somewhat. Interesting shortcut, kind of felt a little bit jarring, but only because I'm used to the original arrangement. This shortened version would probably be very choir performance friendly. It's almost like a pop song format. Immediately lyrics, chorus, verse, and that's it. It's even like two minutes long. Perfect for a song number. One Winged Angel Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 Remix Remastered OSD. Oh my god, that is a mouthful. Kingdom Hearts, what have you done? I will never understand the entirety of Kingdom Hearts and frankly, I don't intend to. Interesting. This is kind of like when we listen to the original version of Final Fantasy VII and then immediately listened to the Distant Worlds version. This is kind of like that. It's still kind of like the abridged version straight to the choral parts, but with seemingly a live sounding orchestra or better sounding samples. Definitely the same format because from what I understand, HD 2.5 Remix is just like Kingdom Hearts 1, but with added elements. I'm not sure. Any Kingdom Hearts experts in the comments, I would love to hear from you. This sounds fuller, more concise, more rich, harmonically speaking. Interesting, that delivery of Severus! A little bit legato, a little bit more romantically sung, as opposed to the staccato version of the previous versions. Severus! But this one is like... Da -da -da. It's not bad, it's just different. See, it's a prolonged seven roll. Where's the ta da 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 da? Some missing textures. What's going on?
And now it has come to this. The Final Fantasy VII Remake version of One Winged Angel, more commonly known as One Winged Angel Rebirth. The only time I listened to this version was when I was playing the game when I was distracted with trying to survive and to defeat Sephiroth in the first entry of the remake. So I'm guessing and I'm expecting that they're gonna have another version of this when the second entry Rebirth comes out. I can't wait to play that so much. Oh my god, they even up the psycho element of the psycho, you know, the, the psycho violin. Eh, 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 eh. Very iconic cinematic trope. They up the ante here. Whoa, all new sections right here. Still maintaining that march-like tempo. Tripling down on the Carmina Burana reference right there. They're like embracing their inspirations. Oh my god, genius use of the lyrics. There's so many new sections. This is definitely a new piece in itself. This is Wandering Angel Plus. This is so meta and what I'm referring to that interview that Nobuo Oematsu did where he explained that he originally composed One Winged Angel as separate motifs and then pieced them together as a puzzle, like a puzzle. And, and, and and this rebirth version, it's it's like, okay, this is the original One Wing Angel. Let's disassemble the puzzle, add new pieces, totally brand new, and then reconnect them again. And this is pretty much like a musical representation. This is like a new piece of the puzzle rearranged. There's still some recognizable parts, but it's all new. Oh my God. Whew, this is why we listen to music standalone because the last time I heard this was a couple years ago when I was playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. But like I said, I was distracted by the game Play. I was distracted by dialogue and all the sound effects and I never really got a chance to listen to it again until today. I'm so glad because I'm getting surprised now by what I'm hearing and I love it. This is why I love video game music. I love being surprised like this. And Sephiroth with all his expositions. Jumbled puzzle.
I still haven't heard a standardized arrangement of the previous sections. It's all remixed, jumbled, mashed up. Oh my God, I love it. This is all so fresh now. I love that part. That's one of my favorite parts in the instrumental. And now oh, they doubled it, made it more intense. Oh my God. That was a total misdirection. I was anticipating the Sephiroth, but they didn't do it. Oh my God, because I guess they already expect that people, once they hear those Estuas Interis, they're gonna expect the Sephiroth to come in later, but oh my God, they pulled it away. As soon as you're about to sing along, they pull it away, oh my God. <laughs> Standard intro! Finally! Oh my god! They made us wait so long in anticipation of just singing one line of Sephiroth. It was so worth the wait. Oh my god. This arrangement is keeping me on the edge of my seat. This is wonderful. This is like re-experiencing the whole song all over again like when I was in college playing Final Fantasy 7 at the PlayStation 1. Phew! Yeah, so far that's the longest part of this arrangement where it's just almost pulled off one is to one from the original version. Sudden key change? New section? What? Yes, this, I get it. They're using the mechanism of key changes and sudden new sections coming in, going in from the familiar to the new because this battle is being fought in midair. You're going through different levels, different heights of flying debris while trying to avoid Sephiroth's attack and also trying to keep your teammates alive. This is brilliant, yes. Change! What? Woo! That soprano? I can't even reach that with the falsetto. <laughs> That 
bass drum. Pow, pow, so crisp. That syncopation with the veni, 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 yes. Oh my god, do you feel that? Dun, 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 dun. You can feel the pressure of the bass drum player just really hammering that membrane of the drum. You can feel that, that, that. I can hear it. Whoa, there's more! Faster, faster, faster tempo! This is crazy, this is chaotic, this is like... Oh. This is Stravinskyan in rhythm. That is just like dun da dun da dun da dun da dun da dun da so intense. Oh my god, talk about doubling down on the Stravinsky style dissonances. Did you hear that? Dun 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 That's the boss battle theme. I'm going crazy with how they jumbled all the pieces of the puzzle. Again, da, 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 da. <sighs> what an experience, oh my god! That was like an entire story in itself, the abridged version of Sephiroth's backstory, you know, and all that spoiler, spoiler, spoiler stuff. But this time, oh, but you know, we expand that and then add this, add that, and then, you know this, you heard this before, but we're gonna add new stuff, new stuff. Oh. It is so good, it is so beautiful, it is mesmerizing. What a thrill.
they just made it so much harder for me to decide which I would think is the definitive version of One Wing Angel. So I'm just gonna give them like special awards. I believe the original version will always have this retro charm. It will always have this special place in our hearts, that MIDI quality, that Nobuo Oematsu signature arrangement and composition. Yeah, there's always just this certain charm of MIDI video game music that is so distinct that is unlike traditional recordings of music. Not that to say it's bad or good, it's just its own thing. The original version will always have a special place in our hearts, and you know that. But when it comes to pure listening pleasure as a consumer, as a listener who just wants to listen to songs like as if on a radio, listen to the song and then change to the next song and all that, like on a daily basis, as if it's part of a playlist, I would definitely say the Advent Children version is still the definitive listening pleasure experience. Definitely really hits the spot with the right balance of length, the right balance of energy and orchestral nostalgia. But man, oh man, if you really want to go on a full-on cinematic extended journey. The FF7 remake version is just so good. I would say the remake version is the definitive version as a video game soundtrack, as a video game score. And then special awards goes to the Kingdom Hearts version for their very abridged, very short version that is definitely fitting for a choir-centric live performance. So for example, if a professional choir or a school choir chooses to sing One Wing Angel and they're only like given a certain amount of time for whatever show or program, the Kingdom Hearts version is definitely the perfect solution for that kind of situation. And the Distant Worlds version is just definitely an upgraded live version of the original PlayStation 1, PlayStation 1 version. So I'm gonna put them in the same kind of category. If you want to listen to the nostalgia original version simply just play the original PlayStation 1 version and if you want to hear that exact same version in a live setting the Distant Worlds version is definitely that right amount of one is to one upgrade from the original but man oh man things start to get exciting and they deviate so much with the Advent Children version and the remake version is just it's just so good. All these versions are amazing. But let me know in the comments, which is your favorite version? Because I for sure am at a loss for words in choosing that one version, that one winged angel version. The answer is yes. Now click on this next video for more discussions about video game music. Let's go.